simple percents involve a part whole ratio. That will give us a decimal number. We then multiply by 100 to get a percentage. This means that with simple percents, we have a theoretical maximum of 100% when the part is as large as the whole and a theoretical minimum of 0% when our part is 0. The important task in any simple percent is to determine what exactly is the part and what exactly is the whole. What really trips us up on percentages is not the calculations. They're very simple. What is going to trip us up is the word problem, figuring out what is the relevant part and what is the relevant whole. So let's take a look at a two by two contingency table that might be the results of an experiment. Our sample size was 20 subjects total, and 12 of those were in a control group, and 8 were selected to be in the experimental group. The dependent variable was whether or not each participant passed or failed a test at the end of the experiment. So let's suppose that in the experimental group of 8 participants, 6 passed the test, 2 failed. And in the control group of 12 participants, nine passed the test and three failed. Suppose I were to ask you what percent of the entire sample of 20 were in the experimental group of eight. Well, I've identified the part, the eight who were in the experimental group and the whole the entire sample. So it's going to be 8 divided by 20 times 100, that's 40 percent. Now suppose I asked you what percent are in the control group. There were 12 participants in the control group out of our total sample size of 20. So 12 divided by 20 times 100 is 60 percent. Hmm. Notice that the experimental group and the control group added together is going to equal our total sample size. Just like 40% and 60% equal 100%. Now here's a slightly different question. What percent of our experimental group passed the test. Usually the word that follows the preposition of is the whole. So I said what percent of the experimental group is going to pass? Well, let's look for a diagram that has the experimental group as the denominator. Ah, must be this one because we're talking about eight participants total in our experimental group. And remember, six of them passed. So that would be six divided by eight times 100 is 75. 75% 75 passed. We could also therefore conclude that 25% of the experimental group must have failed because the total of any particular whole must be 100%. Now, let's look at those same six subjects who passed, who were also in the experimental group, but let's ask a slightly different question. What percent of all participants who passed the test were in the experimental group? So, it still sounds like we're having this six as our numerator, but now we have a different whole, the whole number of people in our sample who passed the test. So our new denominator is going to be 15. 
So 6 divided by 15 times 100 is 40%. 40% of the people who passed the test were in the experimental group. You can convert scores into percents. Let's suppose we had four subjects in our particular sample, and here are the scores of these subjects. Let's suppose the cutoff for passing the test is a score of six or better. What percentage of this sample passed the test? Well, this person who got a seven, but not these three people. So out of a total of four, one passed. One divided by four times 100 is 25%. 25% of this small sample actually passed. That's how to use part whole percents.